Dr. Davidson, and uh, you've all heard it. We hear it all the time. I'm too blessed to be stressed, and I really like that. It's a cliche, uh, and it has some value and truth to it, uh, particularly if we mean that it is that truth, that reality that we do through, we do get through our stresses. But the fact of the matter is that stress is a very important aspect of our lives, a very powerful aspect of our lives. In fact, we find stress in the life of Jesus Christ, so we can't say that we don't have it. And sometimes, uh, very often, we become so spiritual. We are spiritually over the top with people who uh, share about the fact that they're going through something. I get emails, I get phone calls, I get texts of persons who are ready to give in, who are ready to give up, uh, and they are encountering things in life. And uh, it would be real easy to say, well, don't you have faith that God will see you through? That would be very simple to do. But the fact of the matter is that there are things in life that can happen that have extraordinary impact. And we should not be over the top spiritually when we're working with people. As an example, if you have a child that is dying, that's an extraordinarily gut-wrenching time. If you've been given the word that you have a terminal illness and your time on planet Earth is up, that could be extraordinary. It can have extraordinary impact on you. And then it doesn't have to be that do much doom and gloom. It just could be the fact that you just have a sense that things are just not going well for you, that you seem to do things right. You help people. You love people. You try to do the best that you can. But it looks like life is, is dealing you uh, some, some things in return that just don't seem to be fair. And so life becomes stressful just from the fact that my car doesn't start to this morning or I've been given a layoff notice. It can be those kinds of things that bring a, a, a degree of stress into our lives. But the fact of the matter is that when we, when we are followers of Jesus Christ, which we say that we are, we can expect stress. In fact, it is blessing through the stressing that happens with believers. We are blessed through our stress. Let's take a look exactly what I mean. Uh, what I'd like you to do is look at John chapter 8. We want to see Jesus. He is the person that we emulate, that we follow in terms of human functioning. When you start talking about dealing with stress, we're talking about human functioning. And since Jesus is the prototype, is the model of humanity, we like to get the imagery of him into our hearts and minds. Now, if you want to have scripture that you repeat to yourself, that's excellent. But there's nothing like imagery. I'm an imagery person. I like to the imagery of Jesus in my heart and mind so that I can know how I'm supposed to respond to life circumstances. So very quickly, if you were to turn to John chapter 8, you don't have to do that right now. But there's an experience there that I want to share with you. There was a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they bring this woman to Jesus. Now we know that it is a sham because you can't catch a woman in adultery by herself. In fact, it really, really wasn't about the woman. It was about entrapping, it was about trapping Jesus so that they can accuse him of something so that they can take his life. Now that's stress, isn't it? Nevertheless, they asked this woman we have caught in adultery. The law of Moses says that she should be stoned. What do you say? And so Jesus, with that pressure placed upon him, this woman's life in question, but he really knowing that it's about him and entrapping him, stoops down into the sand. We don't know what he wrote, but he stoops down. And that whole thing of stooping down means to me, as I translate it for my life, is that when there is something that is stressing and oppressing me, for me to bow down, not before it, but before my God who manages the circumstance. Now watch this. While he's down, they're demanding an answer from him. That's the, the bombardment of the issue, trying to pressure and stress us to come up with an answer. The enemy wants to answer the question for us. He always does. He's got an answer for our circumstance. But we all want to be able to come up just as Jesus did. He came up and what he says that you, if you have no sin, go ahead, start throwing this, the, the stones at her. Of course, I'm being contemporary as I say that. And then back down in the ground he went, riding again. What that has always meant to me, and boy, it's nothing like when somebody's got it in for you, but it's a game. They're not acting like they have it in for you. They're trying to indirectly or vicariously get to you. So there's nothing like that. That's an incredible stress. 
Matthew chapter 26. Let's go there. Verse 36 through 38. So we're, first we were in John chapter 8, verse 1, and thereafter. And now we're in Matthew chapter 26. There is not a healing balm. There is not a handkerchief I can send you. There's nobody who can blow on you other than the Lord God Almighty by the power of His Holy Spirit for circumstances of stress. Don't be fooled about it. Okay? But there are there's some things you can have in mind, as I said earlier. Here Jesus is. It's chapter 26, 36 through 38. And here he is in, in the most extraordinary stress-filled circumstance in the history of humanity. Jesus, the one who healed, the one who raised from the dead, the one who opened the eyes of the blind, gave hearing to those who could not hear. We could go on and on and on, gave hope, gave opportunity, all of that. All right, knew what forgiveness meant, knew how to love people like no one else could love anyone. And here he is, in the most extraordinary time, praying as it were, as if drops of blood are coming out of him. Okay, now watch this. This is a different prayer from the model prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This is more therapeutic prayer. He needs to be relieved of the stress which is up on him. In fact, around verse 38 to Matthew 26, verse 38, he talks about the anguish in his spirit because of the weight of humanity and history and the world and every person is up on him. And what lies before him, watch this, is sin and sin. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean, what lies before him, he's never sinned in his life. If he disobeys the will of his father, that's sin. But if he goes to the cross as a result of his father's will, waiting on him, it's the sin of a murderer, the sin of a rapist, the sin of a pedophile. The worst sins are hung up on him as he hangs up on the cross. That is stress, my brothers and sisters. Remember Jesus said this, the student is no greater than the master. Okay, the student is no greater than the master. So therefore, we can have the expectation that there's going to be stress in our lives. But stay with that same illustration in Matthew chapter 26. After verses 38 through 46, he stays on his face praying. Watch this. The answer to the prayer is great. But the therapy, while you're waiting for the answer, is the praying. When you're praying, you have to stay on your face. Remind yourself of who your father is. Remind yourself of the faithfulness of your father. Remind yourself of his record throughout history and his record in your life. And if you stay down there, when you finally get up for that third time, and that third time just means to stay down there until relief comes over you, when you stand, you will be ready to stand against whatever the challenge may be, whether it be in life or whether it be in death. That's how you deal with stress. Now, Romans 8, 28, 29, particularly verse 29. We know verse 28 so well, many of us, if you don't, for all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purposes. Well, what's that good thing that comes out of it? It's the next verse. For who he foreknew, he already knew you. All right. He predestined. That means he knew your destiny. He knows what is going to happen to you. He knows the road that you're on. Nothing is a surprise to God, and you have to understand that. It is being blessed through the stress. Look what that scripture says, that he is conforming us to the image of his son. What about that word conform? That word conform means pressure. And in life circumstance, how do you get pressure? It is through stressful circumstances. If it causes you to bow down, if it causes you to remind yourself every day about the record of your father, that he loves you and that he's given the very best for you, oh, that will make you get up and deal with your stress. And you'll have a degree of relief within your stress. So we pray, realizing who I'm praying to, the record of the person that I'm praying to, that his faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. He knows intimately my personal circumstance, and he's already working on my circumstance. When I pray like that, when I get up, that stress has been well managed. That stress has been.